okay to listen to the to those people however they don't know everything <laughs> they don't know everything you know why not go to the one who knows it all who, who has the perfect answer who has the right answer to our situation you know he doesn't make no assumption and uh, gut feeling he knows the facts amen mm -hmm. God knows it all mm -hmm. he and, and we should go to God first he's omniscient and that's just a fancy way of saying that God sees it all God knows it all He's all wise God. He's a well-informed God. Amen. Amen. Basically, God knows everything. And that's what David wants us to know. David wants us also to know that our Heavenly Father is everywhere. Everywhere he, he is. He's everywhere we go. God is there. David says, I cannot escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. He said, if I go up to heaven, you are there. Mm -hmm. If I go down to the grave, you're there. And God is right here with us now, presently. And he'll be with us in the future. And God is already in our future. He's waiting for us to catch up with him. Amen? Amen. He's everywhere. And no one, nothing can escape him. That's why we can be confident that we are protected because God is always there. Nothing and no one is out of his reach. Nobody is too far gone for God. Amen. 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 As uh, Sister Sheila was talking about in uh, David, um, Daniel in the lion's den, God is there. And when we're in our pit, like Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit, God was there. When we're in our death's valley, when we're experiencing the love, the loss of a loved one, or and when we're on our deathbed, God is still there. Amen. Amen. In our fiery furnace, in our storm, he's present. He's there with us. He's always watching over us. He's always looking. He's always seeing our, our every move. Amen. So David said, I want you to know that our Father is everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere we are, God is there. Number three. <clears throat> David wants us to know from reading Psalm 139 that our Father is our creator. He's the creator. Yes. This is what David says. He said, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit together. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so marvel so wonderfully, such a wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know, that's what David says. So God, our creator formed us and made us and fashioned us. So that's why we are no junk. We can't listen to what anybody say negative things. No, nope, that's not me, I'm, I'm not a junk. God took his sweet, precious yes. time to mold us and shape us into this marvelous creation, this being, this human being. You know, if you look at our, Think about our body, the brain. Everything about our body is just magnificent. God took his time to create and fashion us so perfectly. Amen? Amen. So in Genesis 2 and 7, this is what it says. Then the Lord God formed, that is, he created the body of a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils yeah. the breath of life. And the man became what? A living soul, a living being. He, came a, he became an individual, complete in body and spirit. Listen to this. The essential chemical elements found in soil are also found in humans and animals. Did you guys know that? <laughs> this is a scientific fact that was not discovered until recently, although God displayed it back in Genesis. So God takes this dirt, ugh, Something that's trampled on, pooped on, considered worthless, considered dirty, and he creates a gem, and that's us. He creates his masterpiece, fashion it. He creates his prized possession, that's who we are. He creates his object of affection, that's us. He makes his work of art when he created us, amen? amen. <laughs> that's beautiful. Amen. That's what David wants us to know, that God is our creator. Number four, David wants us to know from reading Psalm 139 that our Father cares deeply 
about us and for us. In verses 13 through 14, if, when you read that, and if you still don't feel special in the eyes of God, David said, let me go on a little further. David said, let me give you a little more details. He says, how precious are your thoughts about me, O God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. David says, they outnumber the grains of the sand. And he says, when I wake up, you're still there. <laughs> when I read that, it's like David saying, when I mess up and you know go to bed, oh God, I know I didn't let you down and wake up, you're still here, you're still with me, you're still loving on me, you still care about me. How amazing are the thoughts of us. God thinks wonderful thoughts about us. He's concerned about us. He's thinking about us. His thoughts are so good and it outnumbers the saying. Have you thought about that? That's what scripture says. It outnumbers. He's, that's how much he's thinking about us. That's how much he cares about us. It says his thoughts are good. They're not evil. But he has wonderful plans for you and I. Wonderful things in store for us. Amen. 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 David writes also in Psalm 40 verse 5. He says, Oh my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I try to recite all your wonderful deeds, this is what David is saying, if I try to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. That's how much and so amazing, amazing how much in abundance God is thinking about us. God cares for us. Amen. And David wants us to know that, that God cares deeply about us. He's concerned about us. He's thinking about us. You know, God's thinking about us even when we're not thinking about him. You ever wake up in the morning, you're busy doing stuff. I know I do that. I wake up in the morning, oh, I can do this. I got my list. I need to do something. Go about the day. I'm like, oh, God, I didn't even think about to praise you and thank you. And I'm like, oh, God, forgive me. But God is constantly thinking about us. Even when we're going on our merrily little way, he's still thinking about us and he's still hanging with us. Amen. You know, that Amen. is so awesome to me. <laughs> Number five. This is my last principle. Number five. David wants us to know that our Father is holy. So therefore, we must be holy. God wants us to be holy. God says, be holy for I am holy. Our God created us in his own image. Therefore, he expects us to be holy. But you know what? Well, we can't live a holy life apart from Christ, mm -hmm. apart from the Holy Spirit living inside of us and leading us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We can't live this holy life, but we can with Christ, and we can with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. As a parent, you know, for those of us who are parents here, we demand our children respect others, obey, you know, obey me, yeah. be kind, you know, uh, act respectful. This is, these are the things that we demand. And we expect them to, to have manners that are pleasing to us, you know? We say, hey, you better act like you have some sense, you know, when they go out the house. You better remember who you are. You know, don't embarrass me out there. Yeah. And that's what God demands. Don't be embarrassing me, you know? We say, oh, I'm a Christian. And it's sad that when we announce that we're a Christian, people go, oh, you one of them? You know, their guards go up, the red flag, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. When we say we're a Christian, they should, they should want to draw close. Oh, really? Tell me more. You know, that light should be shining brightly so others can see God through us. Yeah. But sadly, when we say, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. people say, oh, mm -hmm. I don't trust them. Because we're a Christian, a lot of people run away from the church instead of running to the church. Amen. Amen. But God wants right. us to live holy. <laughs> we live holy before him allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and be in tune with the Holy Spirit, then our light would shine and people would say, I want more. Tell me more about your God. You know, I want to know more. Well, what church you go to? You know, they want to come with you. What, what kind of teaching over there? Because you're not like the, you know, the rest of these folks. They'll see the genuine order go, amen. amen. So, so that our prayer should be, Father, help me live in a way that brings you praise, in a way that pleases you. So when we read eight verses, the 18 verses in this psalm, the psalmist David, he acknowledges that God knows everything, 
that the psalmist ever does. No matter when, no matter where, he does it. God acknowledges it, God sees it. Also, God, although God's vast knowledge of an individual's deed, you know, that could be reassuring. Oh yeah, it's good that God knows everything. However, for those who are wicked, it can be frightening. So the psalmist at the latter part of that, David says, distance yourself away from me, you evil folks. I don't want to be mixed with you. And he prayed a beautiful prayer at the end of this uh, psalm. And this is what he says. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. He says, test me and know my anxious thoughts. He said, point out anything in me that offends you, God, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Is that your prayer? That's my prayer. God, search my heart. God, look at inside me. Point out those things that I am doing that offend you, God. Convict me so I can get on the right path. Amen? Amen. That's a powerful prayer. So these are the five things I'm going to recap, and then I'm going to be done. I didn't want to hold you too long. The 